or playback on the on the streams or whatever means it's a testament to how serious talabul ilm is and how they are eager for some sort of yani i'm not saying just my lesson but other lessons as well um if they are eager for for this yani for some sort of knowledge for i do apologize to the brothers and sisters especially the brothers yani shout out to ASWJ Oven those brothers and sisters mashallah tabarak ar rahman they're very beautiful crowd um but it is one of those things that this week and it looks like slowly slowly it's it's getting more muddled time is just getting more muddled yani it's uh, but inshallah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his assistance and his guidance and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease all of our affairs and hopefully we get to some sort of normalcy soon inshallah amen amen barakallah fiq let's get straight into the book reviews for tonight what are we starting with what's the topic today you want to you want to you want to you're the man <laughs> i'm following <laughs> you're, the, you're the sheikh i'm just a little guy coming uh, come on in. come on <laughs> i'm just a ready presenter here <laughs> Okay, so today's, today's uh, what me and Sheikh Nilal were talking about is for the student of knowledge, whether it be in English or Arabic, how do they study tafsir, not ulum tafsir, not going into like sciences, the yeah. sciences of tafsir, but the tafsir itself. If you have a verse, what book do you go to to get the meaning or more information about the verse? For that is يعني, the topic that we have because the ulum of the tafsir, that is a different lesson, that's a different set of books altogether. And it would just be too massive to go through in one hit. But basically what we wanted to do is give guidance in English first and then in Arabic uh, for what tafsir to read, for what category, how to start off, what's the best or what do we think is the best, what do we recommend. Um, and يعني, it's one of those type of things where it's tojihat it's just general advices so that everyone kind of gets a foothold in in uh, tafsir per se and builds a tafsir library let's start off as we normally do disclaimer we haven't read every tafsir book so that's, we're not able to 100 percent. when <laughs> give we say you, yeah yeah when we say what's the best it's what's the best for what we know and what from our mashayah have mashayah. advised us hey, yeah. yani, generally what i'm going to say has been the same Yani about the Arabic tafsir has been the same general advice of all of my tafsir mashayikh in, in Saudi. In yani we had tafsir for in, in the university and outside of the university of Medina. Yani for four semesters in the university, I don't think any single one of them differed in the maratib, in the ways of tafsir, in the books that you go through in what order. And they had other uh, yani advices, inshallah we can get to that if okay. it pops up. Perfect, let's get into it. Let's start off with the Arabic, then at when we finish the Arabic, we'll, we'll, go the English. We'll, okay. we'll go to the English. So, generally, what do the Mashayikh say to start off with? The first book to start off with in Tafsir in Arabic is Tafsir Jalalain. Tafsir Jalalain. And obviously, we know that يعني, Jalalain is basically the two Jalals. The two Jalals. يعني, this book has not one author, it has two authors. And it was Jalal al Din al Mahalli and Jalal al Din al Suyuti. Imam al Suyuti or Imam al Mahalli. For these two giants of knowledge, one passed away and then the other completed the task. But basically, what this is, is to kind of help you get the meaning of the of the ayah. And it's basically, in a way, the mufradat of the Quran. To get into uh, what do words mean. And so how they've told us to you know, you read this book is basically read it from cover to cover at least once. And if you're able to memorize, but that's obviously another step. But this book here, Tafsir Jalalain, is always the first tafsir that they that they say to start off with. To you know, begin the tafsir journey. Why? Is because it's the easiest, one of the shortest, and the quickest. You know, some of the, the verses of the Quran, basically how it's broken up, it's يعني, by phrases, by phrases. So, um, يعني, very, very basic. Like this word means this meaning, very, very basically. And so, this print here, the Darus Salam edition, is actually a good print. It's not bad. Uh, there are obviously other ones, like Muasasa Trisala has printed it. But this one, because it's half page, half Quran and half uh, Tafsir, yes. it makes it really, really nice. Really, really nice. Um, and the way that they've presented it is very, very uh, basic and very easy to just get. What does this mean? This ayah mean specifically? What does this word mean when it says lakum? Who's lakum here? What, what does it mean? 
Now, who is it referring to? Very basic, but very pointy, يعني, poignant in the sense where it gets straight to the point. For this one, is probably the first tafsir that everyone recommends to go through. It has been translated in English. Very, يعني, very interesting. Uh, the translators uh, Ash'ari. So that has to be taken into account. Aisha Buley translated uh, that, uh, this, this book here. For the English speaker, I, I know we're going to go through the other ones, but specifically this book, for the English speaker, I don't think it's very beneficial. Because no. you're trying to get the words of the Qur'an in English, right? You might as well just read it, uh, the Noble Qur'an, Muhsin Khan translation of the Qur'an, and you get more beneficial in, in knowledge. In the sense, if someone wanted to read it, how I'd say would be get the English, if your Arabic isn't that on point, Go through the Arabic and just if you're struggling with the meaning of something, go back to the English to g- get the meaning of something. I, I, I agree 100%. I have yeah. the English mm. and uh, well, the English translation mm. is pretty good. It's very good. It's very good. They're very good. But it defeats the purpose. What you said is a better recommendation. Yeah, than the, the way that they've told us to read this book is to first and foremost understand the book and it's a way to just grow your tafsir jargon. Mm. Yani the tafsir terminologies no. And so if you do that in English You're defeating the purpose in that sense For In English it becomes obsolete For the way that the scholars have told us to read it right? The, the way that they have inf- yani advised us to read it It doesn't really make sense But it's one of those uh, ones That you should read in Arabic In English if someone was going to go And yani say oh, Tafsir Jalalain is the first one Maybe I should read that No I would say Read Noble Quran Taqidin Hilali Mahsin Khan Translation of the Quran With a summarized tafsir all in one book and you'll be fine inshallah excellent uh, there any ta'aliqat that, that we should be careful of or anything we should be careful of in the Arabic I know some of the mashaykh have, have done some things to look for not much but there's some look in aqeedah you have to be weary of يعني, everything ch- technically in tafsir because a lot of tafsir this is something that is known generally is a lot of the tafsir that were written that we have current today not in the, in the past they did have issues in Aqeedah because generally the lens that they look at the tafsir from is a linguistic manner. Mm. The Many of the scholars, like Fakhreddin al-Razi, rahimahullah, and uh, other scholars. But when you go deep into that side and then you start interpreting it in a metaphoric way rather than a literal way because there's a me- methodology of tafsir. And inshallah we'll get to that in another class of how to study the methodology of understanding tafsir. But when someone goes into the deep aspects of the lugha and the secrets behind why this is mentioned, a lot of the times they go into and fall into ilm uh, al-kalam. Yeah, from, from memory, the Dar salam one does have warnings and some... Um, I haven't seen... Think it's, it's, yeah, there, are, there, one, are there is the another one that has it. This one here, it, they have done some of the hadith that come up, if they come up, that, and they have some tasheeh of some of the mm. issues. But it, it, like very rarely... Very rarely, like if I'm just scrolling through over here, there's yani, some things of Sahih Muslim over here, um, but on like many of the pages, there's nothing. Mm. The, on many of the pages, there's nothing. For just in Aqeedah, in generally, مثلاً, uh, just whenever you go through a tafsir, you want to see if it's Ash'ari or Salafi, Athari, يعني, if you want to see if it's Haq or Batil, uh, basically, you just go to the the ayat of sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The wajh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بَلْ يَدَاهُمَ بْسُطَتَانِ These ayat for instance Or ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Or um, verses where it affirms certain characteristics And the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Go to those ones and see what they've done Have they affirmed in the, And they say for instance in English If this is very much easier to go through Have they said for instance As befitting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner befitting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without likening his creation to the creation, right? The likening the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. Uh, fa, or like we affirm it as, uh, as is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah in a manner befitting his majesty without doing tashbih, without making, يعني, asking how and making يعني, comparisons. For there should be something in brackets. Right when they do affirm it, but if they say, for instance, this is not meant to be taken literally, this is a, يعني, uh, uh, a metaphor for the greatness or the power of Allah subhanahu wa taala, or the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa taala, or the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Then over here we say this tafsir is not correct because this is يعني, not the not the way of the salaf, not the way of the pious predecessors. For that's generally the way to look for any Excellent. book, any book, to how to find out if something is is 
uh, orthodox or if something is not so orthodox in the sense where is it in the understanding of how we say is the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih as affirmation in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are the ways that you go to something that's very specific right so Surah Taha or يعني, very uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa right um. I mean so some of it will say this is not yeah, taken literally this is the spirit of the word يعني, there's always something you know what I mean there's lif and but no if something's no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam in a manner befitting his majesty now before before we move on mm. um, for the brothers and sisters in Sydney it is a uh, Adan time Isha time so for those waiting for the Adan we apologize uh, due to this live program but it is time for Adan in Sydney uh, Barakallah I like Le- that Let's move on to the next uh, Arabic tafsir um, So the next one after يعني, So tafsir Jalalin is the first step The next step after that is tafsir uh, al-Sa'di Tafsir al-Sa'di Which is tafsir al-Kareem al-Rahman Fi tafsir kalam al-Mannan so, so this book here is by Imam al-Sa'di Who is more generally known as the great teacher of Shaykh ibn Uthaymin Rahmatullah mm-hmm. alayhi Imam al-Sa'di, they say that Shaykh ibn Uthaymin got his يعني, ease and the way of explaining and يعني, if someone, anyone who reads the works or listens to the works of Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, they all say, wow, that was easy. Wow, that was easy to understand. There's nothing hard about it. The, the way the ibarat of the Shaykh are very basic, simple, straight to the point, not يعني, and using the terminology of the people. So even if your fusha is at 100%, you'll still be able to understand what the Shaykh is saying. That's something that's beautiful. Where they say they got that from was from Sheikh Sa'di. Rahmatullah alayhi. And they said that Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah, was one of the forefronts of bringing back the kalam of Sheikh al-Islam and al-Qayyim back into, into light with the students. And so when he came and he brought it back into light, it was one of those things where it spread, right? And, and he was in the forefront of, of uh, spreading it from Qasim, from Buraida, uh, where the Sheikh, rahimahullah, was from. Um, but... And Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen studied, and يعني, the, the story is famous. But this tafsir, if you look in the introduction, and uh, this is the best edition of it in Arabic, the Dar al Jawzi print, uh, in four volumes. You can get it in one volume printed in by Dar al Salam. Get the four volume. Get the four volume one, boys. Get the. I struggled for years with the one volume. It's just so. Three, three columns. Three, it's it's too much. Four columns and two pages. Yeah, and then w- wallahi, it was uh, it was like a new lease of life when I got the um. It was it's w- such the a new one, it's, and it's such a beautiful yeah, layout. It very it's nice. such a it's it color green, red, black. It's beautiful. You can't go wrong with this, but the the way the Sheikh wrote this, rahimahullah, he mentions it in his introduction. He says. I'm not coming here to give you the background story of the verses. No. I'm not here to give you... And I'm obviously, I'm summarizing and I'm adding my two cents. But basically he's saying, I'm not here to give you everything that was written about the verse. He says, my main aim is to give you the meaning of the verse. The meaning of the verse. And obviously, because it's very recent, so it's it's a bit more uh, in the sense where it's in just because the time frame between us and and the sheikh isn't that isn't that far it's a bit more relevant to today's issues and today's يعني, problems because a lot of the focus points in this is tarbiyah so it is more like a tafsir which deals with tarbiyah isn't 100%, it 100% 100% so th- th- you'll get the meaning of the verse mm. and you'll get if there is anything that's there from the sheikh it's like how do we understand this and appropriate it in our lives it's a beautiful tafsir I think the sh- sheikh died in the 50s is that right the 50s or 60s well, I don't know I think I it's 1956 or 57 yeah, it's from memory it's 70, 76 hijri last yeah, anyway, that's 1376 hijri yeah. we're in 44 right now right 1443 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. 43 Jumped a year Close enough <laughs> It's COVID <laughs> COVID uh, By then it's like COVID 32 uh, Only 10 months left <laughs> Of the year <laughs> Or 11 months uh, uh, 10 months Yeah, yeah, 10 months, yeah. Um, So that's like a good 30 yeah, 50 It's a good A good a good while ago A good while ago I don't even test my math bro. Come I on. think it is 1956 From memory From memory Yeah? Yeah I Okay. So, yeah. See Take his word on that um, <laughs> Correction <laughs> We will be edited in later. <laughs> <laughs> so this one here, this print over here is beautiful. So the main aim of the Sheikh, as I mentioned, was to bring you the meaning of the verse. And if there's anything that told you had is that are coming in here is from Terbiya. So it's on يعني, spirituality, it's on morals, etiquette. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We have a Bushra, don't we, for him as well, for the listeners. So we have a oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. We're going to speak about it later. 100%. But this one here, 
um, as a tafsir, if someone wanted to skip the first step and go into this one, they, they are able to do so. They will understand it. And I think, Wallahu alam, the first chapter in here, before the tafsir starts, the muqaddimah itself Correct. is gold. Is gold. It could be written as a book by itself and it should be written in words of gold. And the bushra is that it's been translated. Oh, okay. why? Are you <laughs> Sorry, what's I don't want to. What's the whole point? Couldn't hold it anymore. What's the like this? No, never tell this guy secrets, first. Astaghfirullah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think they know. <laughs> uh, another another bushra is you can find it online, but we, we recommend that you buy the yeah. hard copy. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. We'll but get to that later, inshallah. This one here, uh, in four volumes. So the 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 introduction, why it's so beautiful. It gives you principles of tafsir so if this is mentioned in the quran it usually means one of three things and how do you know what it means it goes through that if your arabic isn't so strong you will struggle a little bit on this part only just the introduction which i think is like 30 40 pages max but you will benefit from it if you your arabic is good you you really will benefit from it and again it's the the, the setup of this the layout of this is absolutely beautiful is absolutely beautiful. So the best print of it is from Darim al Josi. You can get the one uh, one volume edition, and there's other volumes, yani other editions out there. There's a new one printed uh, recently, but the mm. four volume edition of this is you can't go wrong. It's just so beautifully set up. That's it's the one that Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid as well. He's done the muqaddima. Yeah, He's done excellent. the muqaddima of it. He's done the, the that tells you something. Introduction. <laughs> it, that's what I'm saying. It's one of those things that it's just been so accepted in the Muslim world. It's unbelievable. So this one was printed uh, four years, three years ago. Three years ago. This is the which this is the fifth edition of the book, and it's it's. MashaAllah, it's unbelievable. Which means it's selling out and oh, 100 percent. This book, yeah. yani in Saudi, I remember how many times it sold out when we were there. When we were there, it is a must-have. It's a definitely, out. definitely for every library as a reference point, or if you wanted to go through cover to cover, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Um, also, for those who'd like to buy a tafsir for their parents, and their parents have a good command of the lugha, even if it's basic, mm. it's excellent. Definitely, it's a, it's a beautiful gift. It's mm. a good gift as well to the oldies. We'll, we'll post links in, in the description Inshallah. after the program, bi'idhnillah, where you can find it. Inshallah. Um, Let's go. The next one, number three, we're flying through. We're flying through. Huh? The Arabic anyway. I want you to talk about this one, Moose. I got this one for you. I'm not going to lie. Which one? Bismillah. Yes. <laughs> he got happy now there. This is where <laughs> I, I, I wanted to throw my two cents in at the start. Yeah. Where I would put a jalalain on the side yeah. and start with this one. Really? You'd yes. start off with this? Yes. Okay. Uh, Zubudatul Tafasir um, for our Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Sulaiman mm. Al Ashkar, mm. Rahimullah, the brother of Omar Sulaiman mm. Al Ashkar. Now, what's good about this as well, I have a different print. I have, yeah, ooh, the print I have, I think, is better. It's, it's Don't the need to insult yeah, this print. The whole has the, uh, has the whole Mus'haf, so what, 604 pages, mm. and it has a tafsir um, on, the in, sides. In, in, on the sides. Mm. So this one has it in three columns from memory, the other one has it in two columns. Mm. But, um, yeah, two columns, that's mm. right, two columns. And it just gives you, as it says, Zubda. The Zubda of it. It gives it, what's the best translation for that? The cream. The or cream? The cream. That's how it is, but yeah. it's basically the, the most important. The most he's actually summarized uh, Fath al Majid, is uh, that right? Fath al Qadir. Fath al Qadir for Fath al Majid is Sharh uh, Kitab al Tawheed. Yeah, yeah. Fath al Majid is a Shawkanist tafsir, uh, is that right? Uh, 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 so this is the must have as well, and it's in a smaller edition now. Uh, so uh, quite thinner. Uh, this um, is a really old print. Like I found I this. Think, I, I think it's the Sheikh's Mu'assasa that printed it. Yeah, this is Dar al Nafais. Yeah. That in the face. There's a newer one for There's me. a newer one, yes. exactly. But this one I found why why I like this old one, even though like if someone does get it, it's gonna be like in tatters. Like it's in yeah. very it's a very old, old print. But why it's really important to have some of these oldy ones is because this was printed in nineteen ninety. This was printed in nineteen ninety. This is thirty years old, Hala. Yeah, it's good quality, right? you can tell. It's it's not just quality, like it is starting to fall apart, so you will have to glue it up, I reckon. The, the sides are, 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 are completely like we've had this in our warehouse for at least 20 years. I found it recently. Um, You've got the new edition in store? No, no, it's very hard to get. It's very hard to get. And this is very expensive, Tara. It's it's old, but it's gold. But it's one of those things that if someone knows how important it is, Zubda, to get basically similar to uh, Tafsir Saadi, but less detail. And it's, it's straight yes. to the point. And as well, the Arabic is very easy as well, but it's a different uh, way of speaking. They had very different styles, mashallah. But this one is very, very good. Uh, tafsir, um, min Fath al Qadir. And it's, it's something that is very, very nice. It's something that's very nice. In the sense, I'd say I'd put it up 
after Jalalain with Saadi. Yeah, with maybe. Saadi. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Because the main aim of Jalalain is to just get the words and build yani, a, vocab, a, a, yeah. a vocab with the Quran. And y- just getting that gist of going through a book. So I'd put it probably second, we think. Um, and yes. uh, I reckon that that would be a good way to appreciate the book. Wallahi, I reckon that'd be a, appreciate, uh, a good way to appreciate the book. Then... Um, when someone so these are the first two steps generally this is how they've always told us read Jalalain first and then read Saadi read Jalalain first and again in Arabic read Jalalain first and then Saadi cover to cover and then they'd always say to go to Tafsir ibn Kathir that's how it is straight away straight, straight. without a mukhtasar without a mukhtasar they say um, how we were taught a lot of the times when we were supposed to go through Tafsir ibn Kathir some teachers would take the shortcut and give us a uh, mukhtasar and they'd give us umdat tafsir and that's why I got it here. So Ahmed Shakir, Rahimullah. Exactly, Ahmed Shakir. So I will go through this one before we get into tafsir ibn Kathir. So this one is generally regarded, um, umdat tafsir. So this one is generally regarded as the best summary of tafsir ibn Kathir. The best summary of tafsir ibn Kathir. And this is printed in three volumes. And basically what he's done, he's basically given you everything that you need to know from Tafsir ibn Kathir and summarized for you and presented it to you as well as he's got some beautiful ta'liqat he's got some really good notes on there on certain issues like for instance Ahl Kitab who are Ahl Kitab one of the best ta'liqat that yes. he just rips it or he just smashes smashes يعني, the modern day idea of who's Ahl Kitab are mulhideen atheists or agnostics are they considered Ahl Kitab and it's just a page يعني, a good I remember when I was re- half a page and he and just r- smashed it. And he's a recent scholar. Hey, uh, it's, 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 Egyptian it's, scholar. It's a, hey, hey. One of the good uh, big muhaddithin of our time as well. Hey, him and his brother, subhanAllah, they did a lot for reviving. Mahmoud al yeah. Hey, they did a lot in reviving Atharia, uh, k- Salafiya in Egypt. In the sense where it was going back to Quran and Sunnah from the Al Hadith perspective. Mm. Going back to the Quran and Sunnah and not having to go through. Um, Yani in not having to go through uh, the modern way of how it was presented, and remember, Azhar at that time was very, very strong, and you had these institutions. But these mashayikh and ulama, they yani did works on Ibn Kathir's things. They did works on a lot of uh, presenting a lot of the old texts and bringing it into light again for the first time yeah, in years. I don't want to stray off too much topic. Sheikh Ahmed Shaker is the one who done the tahqiq of al Musnad, isn't it? Musnad Imam Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yani, but the the main thing about this one is that he specifically done this tafsir by himself. He's done this tafsir by himself, and this tafsir here, umda tafsir. So basically, umda tafsir, what they've taken out is, and we'll get to this about why Ibn Kathir is, uh, yani, so valuable. He's basically taken out a lot of the things about the asnad on the ahadith that are in tafsir Ibn Kathir. He's taken away a lot of the Israeliyat, the, t- the things of Bani Israel, the things of that are found in the in the Gospels. He's taken a lot of the weak narrations out and the the, um, the uh, different opinions if they're not authentic, if they're not, he doesn't even bring that to you. And he he's taken out a lot of things that he's seen that it's rep- repetition. So he's taken a lot out and he's bringing you the it's like a zubda as well, right? That's why it's umda. It's the most focal part of the tafsir itself Excellent. so that's why as, as regarded there are other summaries and obviously we haven't gone through every single one but the most famous is Sabunis uh, Rahimahullah but obviously we'd say that that is only for and this is unfortunately prevalent in our community but we'd say that is for a very strong stream of knowledge in Aqidah who is able to read that tafsir because there are very very يعني, very big issues in that tafsir in Aqidah um, and this one here because the the muhaqqiq and the one who summarized the uh, tafsir is on the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It's, an, it's a safer read. So if someone doesn't have that much of a, uh, a background in aqidah and doesn't have how to differentiate between haqq and batil, this is a, a safe read to read. And inshallah they'll enjoy it in that sense where they can just go through it. It is three volumes, but wallahi when you read it, because of the, the text size, it feels like it's five. Like I remember it took me uh, when I was studying in Saudi and now it would probably be double that time. Ten pages took me an hour. Ten pages would take me an hour. And 
Yeah, and because of like taking notes yeah. and I had a separate book where I, because of studying for exams as well. So every single word like you take out and you'll make a, you'll have a separate deft out for it. And some teachers would be really like they'll duck it on the, on the word. Like what did, what is the third goal of, you know, Ibn Kathir or Ahmed Shah, what did they favor in this? And there's a way of differentiating what's Ibn Kathir's way and what's uh, Ahmed Shah, where are the, inputs of each person there are mm. certain types of brackets that they put here but it is the text is at least i reckon it's like nine right the text size of this is very small it's like like you have to really focus really focus on this i wish they printed this again and they separate made it into five volumes and they you spaced know what i mean out. spaced it out and you have space to write your notes and stuff but this is the print of that ibn hazm it's a reprint of darul wafat's uh print of it in three volumes um, and this is the best print available at the moment. There is a new edition that has some ta'liqat on it. It's, I think, in four volumes, Allahu alam. But again, the sizing problem, and it's just a bit of an issue. Mm. So just to stick, because, and another issue is that we have a lot of problems. This is already a summary of someone who's a contemporary. To make a commentary on this is almost يعني, laughable in the sense, not. I'm not saying... That you shouldn't, but like if someone can go through this, then the next step would be to go through Tafsir ibn Kathir properly, mm. rather than going through a, 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 a notes on this, an explanation on this. For I don't like the on contemporary scholars, on their contemporary works, to go and have a massive sharh on it, other than some things that are very, very important, like Fatul Majid, for instance, right? Very, mm. very important in, in Aqidah. But these books here are very self-explanatory, and he's giving it's giving you a pathway to go into the bigger books. So to go through um, a proper يعني, explanation or a summary of this, I'd say go through this, the Umd al-Tafsir, or any book like it from a contemporary. Read the read it, and then after that, go into the next step or something classical. Go into something classical in the sense where you're not focusing just on the contemporaries. You want to go back to as early as possible in however much you can, however much you can. Where are we going to next? Then it comes to the crux of where a student of knowledge will read cover to cover. Generally speaking, in today's time. In today's time. A student of knowledge, so what we've been told is يعني, how to go through tafsir is start with Jalalain, and we've covered that, Walilah Alhamd. Then Sa'di, Walilah Alhamd, we've covered that. And then Ibn Kathir. So some scholars obviously have said to go through Umd tafsir first, and then Ibn Kathir as a stepping stone. Uh, the summary of Tafsir ibn Kathir by Ahmed Shakir. And then others have said, no, just go straight into Tafsir ibn Kathir. Now, Tafsir ibn Kathir is something that's beautiful because what he did was that he gathered all the tafsir that were before him that were in accordance to the sunnah or the scholars of the sunnah, even some that weren't. And he's given you a tafsir that's appropriated to what is the most authentic, and what is the best and what is the most accurate and it's a very focal point in the sense where he brings hadith and the tafsir that have come before so and the aqwal of the ulama and the salaf so you'll see the aqwal of ikrima mujahid or tabari qurtubi you'll see all of that in here and so what he's done is he's summarized everything for you and he'll say sometimes like in this uh, in this wording there is 11 aqwal for instance and he'll say kan mujahid ala hadha kan ikrima ala hadha he'll give you one after another after another after another and so there's a beauty in that where it summarizes everything and then he'll say and he'll have his own tarjihat most of the time and he'll say wal asah al awwal or wal asah ma kana alayhi al qurtubi wal asah like what is mm. most correct is what qurtubi or tabari or did their tarjihat on so this is tafsir ibn kathir is a very beautiful thing in the sense where you can you're able to go to the tafsir of the past and have it presented to you by someone who was very vast in his knowledge and was seen as yani basically one of the best of the mufassirin till now till now and so he presents to you this tafsir here in a very very beautiful manner and it's a must have if you're not going to read it cover to cover to at least have it as a reference point to at least have it as a reference point inside of your homes as يعني, whenever a verse comes up you don't really understand or you want to get more of it to go through the asbab and nuzul why it was revealed to go through the ahadith that were pertaining to this hadith يعني, if there's a tafsir from the sahaba uh, from the nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam or if there's tafsir from the sahabi 
from a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or if there's a tafsir from a tabi'i he'll bring you pretty much everything that's been there in an in a authentic uh, tradition and sometimes he'll talk about why something is not authentic or why something is authentic and he'll go through very very deep and that's why it's seven volumes يعني the tafsir and then the eighth volume in the Darum al Jawzi, which is the best print it go, it, it's, a, it's a basically faharis so like encyclopedias of how to go into it but Tafsir ibn Kathir as, uh, as, a, as a book is a must-have for any student knowledge in every Islamic home. home. That's just a, straight off the bat, like 100%. You won't go wrong by getting Tafsir ibn Kathir. You can't go wrong, inshallah. What's the best print or the, the okay. you know of? So, <coughs> generally speaking, so why I w- uh, what the way that I want to tackle this is what is the best print available for purchase? There's, no, yeah, any, there's no point in talking about what's the best print if you can't get your hands on it. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, I'm not I'm not gonna go through what's not available online because you can probably get a PDF or whatever you want online. Mm. But what's available to purchase? Yeah, I need a physical copy. What's in print? What's available? So in my opinion, and a lot of Mashayikh have told me this as well, that they favor the print of Darbn al Jawzi. Darbn al Jawzi. It was printed, there are two editions of it. This is the second edition. The first edition was seven volumes. The second edition was eight volumes. The first edition was riddled with mistakes. They had a lot of printing errors. Mm. A lot of printing errors. The second edition, I compared them together because what I did was I got the eight, the second edition and I got re- I sold my first edition to one of the boys. I was like, hey, bro, there's a new edition. I'll give you this for a good price, but there's mistakes in here. I'm not going to tell you, like, I'm not going to say it's the best print. And he's like, oh, I'll take it. Like, it's off your hands. But before I gave it away, I put them together. And it, it was almost a volume thicker. Of almost a volume, yani larger than like seven on seven, not including the last volume that was extra. So they've really, yani they've really made some good additions on the Tafsir ibn Kathir. Uh, and the the second edition, which is printed, let me just get you the actual time. So someone, yeah, so if you'll just know if it's eight volumes or seven volumes. If it's eight volumes, it's second edition. If it's the first edition, then it'll be in sev- uh, seven volumes. The second edition will be eight volumes. They have they've just wrote the first edition on this. They haven't even up updated that. But um, this print here, why it's so good? Firstly, the amount of tahqiq that has gone in this and the m- amount of manuscripts. They say it's around a hundred manuscripts that they've gone over. So that's oh. first and foremost. That's amazing. Then they have on it uh, Abu Ishaq al Huwaini, Hafizahullah Tabarak wa Taala, a great hadith scholar in Egypt, a great scholar in Egypt just generally. Um, he has certain takhrij of certain ahadith. He didn't finish the whole tafsir, but they've summarized the takhrij and the ahkam of Abu Ishaq al Huwaini, Hafizahullah uh, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and they've presented it to you in this, uh, in this, in this t- uh, edition here. And so it makes it very, very perfect. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Then the presentation of this is very nice. Three colors black, green, red can't go wrong the cream pages really beautiful to read really spread out very beautiful to read the page quality is nice and the the best يعني, addition to this is the eighth volume the faharis the encyclopedia very at the important. back this faharis for some reason they've put a lot of effort in it makes your life easier as well when you're so looking for much so much easier like some of the things in here is about like if you're looking for a certain hadith Right in this in this text in Tafsir ibn Kathir, they'll give you the beginning of the hadith, and what page and what volume it's on, and then and then what surah it's in as well, and then they'll give you the hadith narrators and the gradings of each of the narrators according to their own, يعني, uh, يعني their own grading system. Of course, not nothing is infallible, but it's very very interesting. And then they've done the same thing for the athar of the of the salaf. So the first was like if you need a hadith and you know the beginning of the hadith. You don't know exactly, exactly. He'll give you the hadith. And they've done that with the same same thing with the athar of the salaf. And then um, they'll give you what's Makki, what's Madani. Right? It, like in depth. And inside of each, يعني, uh, they'll tr- not every um, ayah or everything, but something that they've specifically stated is Madaniya or what, what's Makkiya. They'll give you that. And it's really, really beautiful. Like... It's really, really nice um, of what's Makkiya, Madaniya. And it's very short, that part there, um, of what what's what. And mostly they just suffice with the chapters and write um, uh, what is what. And then the, the, the Asbab al-Nuzul. 
Asbab al Nuzul, and they give you of the verses and where to go back onto it. So not everything has the Asbab al Nuzul, but yani, this over here, this um, Fahras, this encyclopedia, is beautiful. Is really, really, really good. MashaAllah. Um, if it was to be read by itself, it probably could be. It probably could be. Um, and just, it's an invaluable resource for any student knowledge who wants to use Tafsir ibn Kathir properly. It makes your life a lot, lot easier. Um, so this is currently regarded by a lot of the Mashayikh as the best edition of Tafsir ibn Kathir. The Dar ibn al-Jawzi print in eight volumes, not a seven volume one. Is that available in the bookstore? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I might I have to update. You really? I've got an older edition. Oh. I don't remember exactly which one. This is another edition that was seen for a long time as being the best. I think that's it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this one is the Dar Taiba edition. I think that's it. Yeah, that's This one right. is in five volumes. And this one is seen by a lot of the scholars for a long period of time as the best. Yeah, I remember my dad was saying that this was one of the best until he's seen the Ibn the Dar al Jawzi one. I don't know which one he favors now, but for a long time he was saying this was the best print. Uh, I think now he usually says both of them. But um, this print here, why the scholars like it, is one that it's very spaced out. Really beautiful to read. Um, a lot of space for taking notes. Not like the first one. The first one, note taking is a bit difficult. And the amount of tahqiq that has happened in this is a lot. Mashallah. And again, over 50 or 100 manuscripts, something crazy, um, that they've said that they've done the tahqiq of the manuscripts, how many manuscripts they've used. So this is another, if you can't get your hands on the Darm al Jawzi print, you can definitely get the Dar Taiba edition. Then after the Dar Taiba edition, it'd be the Maktabat al Rushd print um, in five volumes also. Then after the Rushd print, then it'd be the Dar al Salam edition. I know we're not supposed to, like, we can't have any bias, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, not, it's not the best. And then after the Dar, Dar al Salam edition, it'd be the one volumes. Uh, that you can get any yani, printed by various places, but generally Darim al Jawzi, Dar, Tai, Dar Taiba, and then this is again what's available, what's available for purchase in print. I don't again. This is what I've seen in the last yani, how many years? Allahu alam. But this is what I've seen that's available. Then the Rushd print, which isn't commonly found, but you can still find it. Alham. And then uh, sorry, and then uh, after the Rushd print, the Risala edition, and then the Darus Salam edition. No. Then the Darus Salam edition, and then the one volume, uh, one one volume ones. Jazakallah khairan. Well, let's yeah, let's before we get to the English ones, let's give a summary one more or one more time. Uh, what we advise, or generally speaking, I wasn't done with the Arabic, but all right, you is, know, if you want. Are there still more Arabic? There's still more Arabic. Fadl. For the student of knowledge who wants to build a tafsir library. Who wants to have a proper tafsir I library? Leave this for another time. You want no, to enter no, it today? I, I Let's get, do I it. I want to get to what's the next because there's only two extra books that I want to recommend. Fadl. Let's go for it. Tafsir Qurtubi. Jami al Hakam al Quran. Especially for Ahkam. Ahkam al Quran. But generally, everything that you need to know in a, in a, in a, how to understand the verses is in that is in that tafsir, and that is invaluable for any student of knowledge to have. This isn't for the lay person now. Now we're talking about Allah Bi'lam. Now we're talking about students of knowledge. Tafsir Qurtubi is very important to understand the meaning of a verse and how it's supposed to be understood in the Sharia, in, in, this, in the Sharia, how it's supposed to be understood, and the various, uh, yani, uh, varying opinions on how the verse was understood, and the different reasons of why, and the, yani, it's beautiful, beautiful to go through. Then after that, and now this is now the highest form of Tafsir, Allahu A'lam, Tabari. No doubt. Tafsir Tabari. But. Uh, the best print of Tafsir uh, Qurtubi is the print of uh, Risala. I think it's of the Tahqiq of, Qurt, uh, of uh, 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 Turkey. But it's t- finding the Tahqiq of Turkey is very difficult. Very difficult. But the Risala edition is fine. You, you'll be fine with it. But the finding the, the best edition is very hard right now. Shotgun, I have it. Um, so, <laughs> mm. um, so that the Tahqiq of Turkey is very, very good. Um, but y- again, you won't be able to find it. The, the Risala edition is very good of Jamia uh, Kamil Quran, uh, taf- t- Tafsir Qurtubi. Tafsir Tabari is very, very important for a student knowledge to have. However, however, that person really needs to know Ilm al Hadith. He, because Tafsir Tabari was written in a way, uh, يعني, how it said in Arad al Jam' Ma Arad al Sihha. So Tafsir Tabari has brought together everything that was spoken about a verse. 
everything whether it was from Araf like just complete like he knew that it was not Sahih but he gave you the Asanid so he brings everything even if he knows it's a lie against the Prophet ﷺ, he knows it's a lie he gives you the Isnad and it was written for ulama and scholars who read it and say oh that person is in this Isnad this, this hadith is, is batil this hadith is a lie against a fabrication Tafsir Tabari is very important to have However, not everything in Tafsir Tabari is you can say it's it's authentic and correct. He brought to you everything and he's given you the isnad and whoever has given you the isnad, he's protected his neck from blameworth, you know, being blameworthy because he's given you the isnad. He understands it. Now, no one has really gone through properly, Allahu A'lam, and gone through what is sahih, what is da'if in the one set. So people have printed out sahih Tafsir Tabari and mm. tef- some people have done it that way but I'm saying in one text by going through every single goal and going through it like properly I don't think it's been done like in a thing where it gives you something definitive this is sahih this is da'if this is sahih this it's يعني, not not very common to find uh, you'll find parts of it that have been done but not the entire thing Allahu A'lam okay, which prints do you advise for? again that one the it's been there's been a reprint done by Dar ibn Hazm which is that's the only quality read in the sense where the pages are nice the quality of the is the that the one with the fancy colours at the front? I think so but it's yellow, it's, like, yellow, it's, it's black in yellow, stuff. it's a no, new yellow and blue the one with no, the yellow no, 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 no. it's now black and red or something like that it's a nice print as a print but again, the best print was printed by Dar Alam Al Kutub, not Dar Kutub Al Miyah. Don't get me angry, Dar Alam Al Kutub. Um, but that one has been out of print for so many years; it's not funny. You can't find that one. There's been reprints in Egypt. Um, they just bootleg that copy, and they're just like, okay. "What's that?" You know what I mean? You can get find a copy like that, but I wouldn't say to do that because you can find anything you like in Egypt. Uh, straight up, bro. He probably probably say it's some other tahqiq or someone else as well. You know what I mean? There's like books for ulama over there, or not only in Egypt that were Everywhere. never written by the ulama. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Um, so that's the best edition currently available. There's just the Dar ibn Hazm print that's that's readable. Naam. That's a nice edition. The Dar ibn Hazm print is probably at the moment as we stand it's probably one of the best at the moment that you can purchase but obviously if someone can get their hands on the Turkey's edition that's um, that's a really really good edition excellent Jazakallah khairan okay let's let's recap quickly uh, the recommended books for the student of knowledge in Arabic beginning with Jalalain then Saadi, then uh, either Tafsir ibn Kathir or Umd Tafsir then Jamil Hikam al Quran as a reference point because I doubt anyone, Wallahu Alam, today will go through cover to cover, even though I've heard of a story of one Sheikh who said, I focused only on Jamil al Hikam al Quran, Tafsir Qurtubi, and I, f- I read it, s- he said, five times. Five times. But he said that I wasn't reading every other Tafsir that came out. No, I focused all my energy on mastering one Tafsir. And that's a really beautiful thing if someone can do that with Tafsir ibn Kathir or Tafsir Saadi and master it, read it over and over again. That's something mm. that's beautiful rather than having. Yani, m- potential reference points where you don't really you're half baked you know what I mean you don't really know everything and you read it cover to cover you, you'll benefit 100% you'll benefit but to master one would be really yeah. beneficial you know what I mean and then so so okay sorry Jalalain Tafsir Saadi Ibn Kathir Tafsir Qurtubi Tafsir Tabari these are the Tafsir in order as Tabari being the highest and Jalalain being the easiest to, to start off with. with and uh, again, these tafasir generally, as a reference point, you will need to have at least Qurtubi, at least Qurtubi and Tabari, I reckon, because there are other tafasir. Well, they're not saying that this is, this is, I'm saying these are the safest and easiest reads and the most important generally so seen. But like, you can go into other tafasir that have been used, like Fakhreddin al Razi's one, that has a lot of issues in Aqidah and a lot of problems in, in Kalam. Mm. But, do I recommend that to a student of knowledge even? No, unless you're a very strong student of knowledge who has his aqidah down pat and has tafsir down pat and knows how to where these people went wrong. And these are ulama. They, mm. they, their understanding doesn't come bilhawa in the sense where they know they have a way of getting there and a way that the mind way goes there, right? So you have to be very careful because you'll be like, wow, this is this is heavy, this is amazing. You know what I mean? If you don't know, oh no. He did one, two, and three. Like, there's a methodology of studying tafsir, and this is why the introduction of tafsir and kathir is very, very important. To the introduction, of, and also found in the tafsir as well. He's come, like, for instance, how do we see the Israeliyat? 
Is it blanket rule that we don't take anything from the Gospels in the previous texts? How do we use that hadith that's not sahih? And he goes through some very beautiful uh, introductions to tafsir as well. So the introduction of tafsir ibn Kathir is very, very important. There as well. are other tafsirs as well. We haven't mentioned all of them, like tafsir al baghwi for example. 100%, right? The, you, now there are tafsir on certain uh, aspects of the deen. Siyasi, tarbawi, whatever you can, يعني, whatever you want, you will find in tafsir. Tafsir is a bahar. Is a, is, a, is a very big ocean Like you can go into Things that weren't written by ulama Things by, that were written by thinkers Right Think pe- People that weren't scholars But they just had reflections on the Quran Right So like a very famous one of that one Would be like uh, Fi Zilal Right Sayyid it's Qutub Sayyid Qutub So Rahimahullah n- But generally Not as You'd read uh, uh, Again A strong student of knowledge Who knows his aqidah Knows his manhaj Knows يعني, the ins and outs goes through that tafsir as يعني, reflections of the Quran which is not يعني, not not a bad thing but it just opens up a different way of looking at tadabbur of the Quran which is something that's pondering over the Quran which Shala, is something that we in, in future episodes we'll bring in um, the the modern day tafsirs that have been authored mm. maybe mm. a few of them there's many there's mm. heaps and it's mm. probably one of the Definitely. most authored topics uh, today Definitely. or written topics uh, today for this is just general no. So uh, Saadi uh, Jalalain Saadi Ibn Kathir Qurtubi Tabari That's the general list that the scholars always said that this is the way that I don't think none of my mashayikh had told me any other way. Yeah. It's pretty common advice there. Mm. I don't think yeah, I, I don't think that any of them differed. Maybe they differed in no, not even in tartib. Usually that was the always the way. That these are the five and in that order. Once you finish one, go into the next one and have the top two as your reference points always. As I've heard books. some throw in Sheikh Abu Bakr Jazairi's tafsir at the start there, Rahimahullah. But that's not complete though, is it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, sorry. Aysar um, al-Tafasir. Aysar al-Tafasir. So that would be uh, before Tafsir ibn Kathir. Aysar al-Tafasir would be before Tafsir ibn Kathir, after Tafsir Saadi. Or alongside Tafsir Saadi. Aysar al-Tafasir is also a very good one. A very good. That's underrated. Very underrated. Uh, that one is Aysar al-Tafasir is very very nice read it's it, again beautifully presented easy Arabic easily did you, did you make it to, to see the Sheikh there before he passed no. away rahimahullah no. he passed away he was, he was he was in ho- he was sick he was very very sick when we got there we were there um, when he was alive but he wasn't teaching he wasn't teaching he was yeah. very frail got at that there, time. I think in 2007 he was there in, in the Haram there mm. in, in Medina and uh, he was he uh, was Basically, he's he's like we were there when he passed away. His student as I would do remember. most of the talking. Yeah, yeah. Understood. I remember we were when we, we were there when he passed away. Rahimahullah. As I remember, if I can remember correctly, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but I didn't pray over his janazah or anything like that because I didn't get to the haram in time. But I remember that we. I do remember specifically seeing the images of him in the in the hospital, um, when we were there. We were oh. there when that when that happened. Yeah. Let's move on now for our brothers and sisters um, who would like to know more about English tafsir. The first advice we have for you is learn Arabic. <laughs> that's a slack, bro. No, that's no, that's that's. I'm d- I, I yeah, I I was told this mm. hard fact, mm. and you want to be sincere advices in the nicest possible way. Try to strengthen your Arabic, strengthen your tools, so you can access what we just mentioned in Arabic. And I, okay, like it's easy. Like I can, s- like if I heard that, like say ten years ago, I'd be like, "Bro, you're a liver. You're 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 an no, Arab." No, no, no. But like me, raised in Australia, so raised in Australia, but you still have your amiya. You don't understand. To make it fusha is a step, but no. at least you have the chunk. There's a foundation. There's a it's foundation yeah. there, bro. Where I am. I'm Indian, bro. Your brother, uh, your I'm dad, Indian. You bro, my dad no. used to make fun of my Arabic. He used to like humiliate me in front of people. He'd be like, this this is my son, Farhan. Yeah, this was, I swear, this happened so many with Mashayikh, yeah? This is my son, Farhan. He's been studying Arabic in an Arabic school in Risala and in, in, uh, AIA for 10 years of his life. What's the difference between Saqf and Jidar? Roof and the wall. I didn't know a single thing. I just memorized to just pass the exam. I had no clue about Arabic. I love your sense of humor. My Arabic, <laughs> yeah, wallah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, ya Rabb. He used to, he used to love that one. He used to, like, he, he says that the, the, one of the biggest failures of Islamic schools is not being able to teach people like me Arabic. Because you're there for 10 years, you're supposed to be doing something. You know what I mean? It's such a shame that we, if they had just taught us like 50 words per semester, we would have had some level Listen, of Arabic. I've, I've had my, my, my children in, in, in these Islamic schools as well, or so-called Islamic schools. 
Some of them more Islamic than others. Some of them lack in some departments. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of good teachers. Definitely. And Definitely. some of the Arabic teachers my children have had, Allah Mubarak, they're very, very good. But the problem they have is that I have enough time with the students. Look, so I had some mad teachers. Yeah, some but, of the teachers are really good. I didn't have... The, the, the methodology that was taught is like, okay, you read this book that was printed in Saudi Arabia or in Lebanon, completely Arabic, not focused on a... Like the way that you should do it with kids is just learn mufradat. Learn term like words. And the difficult thing is I have different levels as well. That's what I'm saying. Like intermediate <laughs> Arabic, like bro, it's with the, with the kids as well. With the kids, yeah, some yeah. kids their parents speak Arabic at home. Some kids the parents don't speak Arabic. So I feel for the teachers. Hundred percent. No, no, no. I definitely it's agree. Big, but it needs yeah. to be revolutionized. 100%. And so my dad's been saying for a long time that if they had just taught mufradat, so if a kid's good, teach him ten words for the semester. Kids not so fifty. Yeah. Kids better hundred. A certain amount of verbs, a certain amount of nouns, a certain amount of yani if you learn Hada Hadi the is asma ishara and huwa hiya ant anti antuma antum in one semester, you'd get a p- chunk of how to be able to talk. Right? You'd be able to but anyways, that's a big rant for another day. Um but like I'm I reckon this me need, and th- others th- other brothers team. What, big, big brothers who with different backgrounds, brothers who learn Arabic from scratch, mm. brothers who have a background but a media background mm. like myself, mm. brothers who are well versed in Arabic mm. from the Middle Eastern it countries. Needs, needs so you need a whole committee yeah. in reality because it is a bit of a problem. Like I, I, we grew up here. Yeah, right? I've been in Australia since I was like probably three years old, right? But the problem is, is that my Arabic when I went to Medina was "Salamu alaykum wa alaykum salam haluka alhamdulillah that would be the conversation that's all I knew I knew how to read the Quran and I knew how to read Arabic but I knew nothing of like nothing on the page but it is possible that's the thing like alhamdulillah we can read now yeah alhamdulillah, right? alhamdulillah. We, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not from our effort it's from the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Anyone can do it. That's one million percent. Anyone can read and learn Arabic. That's hundred percent. I may may have sounded a bit harsh, but I just wanted to, to no, say no, no, that definitely, learn, learn Arabic definitely. and you can benefit in English. 100%. You can, but has have that as as, as goal. a goal. Be mm. Taala to learn Arabic, strengthen your Arabic, because Wallahi, it tastes better. Yeah, the knowledge, uh, that the, the learn, reading in Arabic, there's a taste to it that you mm. can never get in any other language. And and a beautiful thing about like with the Arabic is your Quran and Salah and just everything you appreciate everything 100%. you appreciate everything every dua you make is deeper every ayah you hear is deeper every it's part of your religion basically it's it's and Shah Islam and Taymiyyah yani one of the things Allah. that he said that what doesn't yani what doesn't help you fulfill an obligation becomes uh, except through it becomes an obligation ما لا يتم الواجب إلا به فهو واجب right so learning your religion is wajib and if the best, if the only way of learning Arab, uh, learning your religion is through Arabic, then learning Arabic becomes wajib as well. But that's a, a, a different, uh, a scholarly debate: is learning Arabic wajib or not? But that's a whole other can of worms. But learning Arabic, well, uh, your appreciation for the Quran, the miracle of the Quran, hundred percent. Yeah, you don't get that except. If okay, you know let's Arabic. start with, with with the English tafsirs that are available that we know of. Okay, um, so in, and uh, uh, you can purchase whether online mm. or. Or at the bookstore online Okay, now. a summary yeah. tafsir that's printed in one volume. Again, Noble Quran, Muhsin Khan, Taqid Din Hilali. So that is a translation of the Quran, but also in the brackets has a summary of Tabari, Ibn Kathir, Qurtubi, and whoever we need. So in one volume, the tafsir, uh, it's, a, it's a summary of a tafasir. Of, of tafasir um, of no, it's called the Noble Quran, Muhsin Khan, Taqid Din Hilali, which is both, it, it doubles up as a translation and tafsir. So he, di- he died recently, Rahimullah. Recently. We spoke about him in yeah. the episode number yes, one, yeah, and we spoke about uh, exactly. that edition there. Yeah. You can find the link Darus in episode has one. That. That he's printed the one. Perfect. That's where you'd start off with. That mm. would probably replace the Jalalain from the, from exactly. the, exactly. From the Arabic. Exactly. Look, Jalalain, again, we've already mentioned that it's already been translated, but it defeats the purpose of yani, reading it in, um, in English. And again, I'm, we're going to go through what I've seen and what I've come across and what Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Nidal has come across as well, Abdul Rahman. But we, we're going to go through what we've seen and what we recommend. For generally speaking, um, there's been um, other tafasir that have come up, but they are all again. We'll get to them how we how we have to go through. So the Noble Quran, I reckon, is the first step in in English For to Muhsin go through. Khan, rahimahullah. Muhsin Khan, Taqidin Hilali to go through um, cover to cover, and then the second is you're kind of thrown in the deep end. 
right you get thrown into there's that that like a bit of a jump in in after then you're just in a full-blown 10 volume set do you know what I mean? That's is, what I'm saying. Which is like, the news, the good news the we're going to say. Yeah. Okay, so there we'll start off with Tafsir ibn Kathir. Has it been translated? No, it hasn't. Completely. Completely. That's right. So misconception Tafsir ibn out Kathir, there, misconception. How, that's what I'm saying. Big time. Now, do you think I said that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. building up hype as well. Like, has it been translated? No, Tafsir ibn Kathir has not been translated completely. What we have available is an abridged edition, which is a summary. So that 10 volume is a summary. Dar as Salaam edition that all of us have had for years thinking that it's, it's the full thing. thing is a summary of one Misbah al munir and it's one volume one volume it's one volume Misbah al munir by mubarak furi rahimahullah it's in one volume uh and basically it's it's a it's a summary of ibn kathir it's a big volume but it's it's no and the bro it's the same thing it's like double column like saadi yeah. it's the same size as saadi pretty much yes same size as saadi um so the English ten volume edition as published by Dar es Salaam and I also believe that was published by Al Firdaus, but they've gone they've th- that's not available now, you can't really get it. But um the Ibn Kathir one is an abridged edition, a summary of Ibn Kathir, and that's ten volumes. Therefore, do I recommend that for someone who says, Give me what's the best tafsir? I don't. When someone comes up to me and says, Should I read Ibn Kathir or Sa'di? I say if Ibn Kathir had been complete, it'd be better than Sa'di. Because, ha- because, had it, it's, because it's, it's Ibn Kathir. It's, it's someone who's, it's more deeper. You get more from it as Bab al Nuzul. There's more benefits of Ibn Kathir on Sa'di, right? So had Ibn Kathir been complete, I'd say go with Ibn Kathir. However, because we have something else that's available, which is Tafsir Sa'di, the four volume edition in the Arabic, which is now published by IIPH in 10 volumes. That is because the English in it is easy, the quality of the print, the layout of everything, everything is beautiful on that. Can I stop you right there, but Fadbal. Dar es Salaam released the first three Ajazat, or they released the last three Ajazat first, and the f- then the first three Ajazat. Mm. What happened? Appa- they're apparently working on the whole thing. For they the same translator, Jalal, uh, Sheikh Jalal? Uh, <sighs> Jalal Abu Rab. Um, I don't know who, what I, I've heard internally. Um, he translated the other ones. I know that. Yeah, I, I, from the top of my, I think he did. But from what I've heard, is that they are working on the entire thing, and I think that's a waste of resources. I think that's a real waste of resources. It's, it's, it's done. done. It's done. Why are you doubling up? You know what I mean. And I think had they focused on something like presenting Ibn Qayyim stuff or Ibn Taymiyyah stuff, that would be more beneficial to the people now, because we have it. Khalas, don't double. You're, you're putting expenses into something that's already been done. It's I I don't or do Ibn Kathir. Do Ibn Kathir Complete, properly. Yeah. C- completely. Do that properly. So in English, the Tafsir Saadi is volumes, in 10 volumes. IIPH. IIPH. It is beautiful to read. The English translation is pretty good. Get the second edition. It has some revisions of the um, of, of certain things. Printed, I think, in 2020. Allahu A'lam. But they don't be... Any, the, anyone in Australia usually will have the newest edition, generally speaking. Don't ask, like, is this the new edition or is it not? It usually is. Um, Who's so the translator? They is have their own team. The team. They have their own team. Uh, Allah Alam, they have their own team. Um, I don't, I can't remember if it's. It's not the Canadian brothers because it must, it must I'm not, have been. I'm not sure. I don't I'm know. not sure. I haven't, I haven't seen who the yeah. who the um, translators of Saudi are. Because I've, I've got the the Dar es Salaam, the the Two first three Ajazat and the last three Ajazat, and it's and it's quite it's good. good. It's translation. very nice. So the Saudi, so if someone, okay, so that's the best ten volumes in English, the best tafsir. So if you want the meaning of any verse. Go to that one. You will be fine in understanding the the ayah with some tawjihat, with some basic guidance on some tarbiya issues, on morals, and morals, etiquettes, and, and and whatnot. If someone wanted to also have the Ibn Kathir and they wanted to build the English Tafsir library, of course, I would say that is better than getting. For instance, now you can find online Tafsir al Kabir in English. There are three volumes. Fakhreddin Raziz. They've translated two or three adi- three volumes of it, and I'd say to a person who's starting off in the tafsir to not but not not read that to not read that um it will confuse you it will if you don't have a da- if you don't have your aqidah down pat or your manhaj keep away down from pat, the from from the tafsir books that have been translated by uh, ahl al-bid'a not there, look there i'm not going to say i don't know if the person is from ahl no, al-bid'a there, or not there are a few out there that i've yeah. come across yeah. and you just read some of the notes they have and it's very dangerous 
I'd say, look, any tafsir that, that is known that the, the alim himself had issues in aqidah, you have to be very, very wary of. So tafsir Sa'di is a safe bet for anyone who wants his Quran, Sunnah, and according to, he gives you a hadith, it's not metaphoric, it's literal, it's in, not in, uh, it's, it's, um, in a way that's, yani, uh, how our salaf explained. And you, you find this, mm. it goes back to a lot of the things in Ibn Kathir as well. It's benefited a lot from Ibn Kathir. However, like if a person who's not well grounded in tafsir and not well grounded in aqidah and manhaj, I'd say don't read any of the other tafsir at this point in stage. Finish, finish something like Saadi, finish even the English edition of Ibn Kathir. And bro, if you're able to read 20 volumes, I'm, sh- I'm telling you, you could learn Arabic by that time. <laughs> I'm being serious, bro. Like if someone wants to really go deep into it, learn Arabic by then, you'll be, the world's your oyster. Sometimes some people know Arabic, but they like to read English after it. What do you yeah. think about that? Yeah, like, like I've not? I've done I've done that a few times. I I like n- like when my dad would do that class, I'll read the Arabic, and then mm. I'll read the English just to see if everything matches up. For TG, sometimes it's a bit different. Yeah, you, it is. You, okay, you yeah, need true. words because you're going to be using those words. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying the general person at home is just reading. I'd say that's a waste of time. Me, like, well, like, when me, the Arabic gets me, to a certain me, level, I don't think it's exactly it's, like after no point, like yeah. why are you reading the same thing twice? Unless you don't understand. Unless you want to, unless you want to get your translating skills like better or something. Like, oh, that's an interesting way. Of, that's a good yeah. way of translating. I've benefited from a lot of the translation. The ibarat. Some phrases in Arabic are very hard to word. So sometimes I benefit from like how how they translate that one. But yeah. usually it's teaching stuff. But it's like how did they be- define that that phrase? You know what I mean? It's very hard to find. But uh, generally, so I'd say the best tafsir available currently in English, Wallah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, A'lam, is tafsir Sa'di in 10 volumes. And then after that, I'd say it's Misbah al-Murir, the abridged uh, edition, 10 volumes of tafsir ibn Kathir. Now, if someone goes 10 volumes, bro, 10 volumes, like, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of people that hate me, they can't do it. So, as you mentioned, tafsir Sa'di has also been pr- published. The first three adza in one book, and the last three adza, 28, 29, and 30, in one book. So you can get those books there. Very good, yeah. And you can start off your tafsir journey through those two. Tafsir Sa'di, even as a as an introduction, if someone wants to just go into that straight away, Tafsir Sa'di is fine as well. So inshallah, they benefit from that. There are other things in, in uh, other tafsir that are available there are in English. singular volume ones as well. So no, no, I'm saying like more generally like Maududi's tafsir and others. But I'd say for someone who wants to be safe, read something that is... Uh, yeah, and he doesn't have to worry about is this correct, is this not correct, does this have anyone else's saying in it? Those two books, Tafsir ibn Kathir, the abridged edition in ten volumes, and the Tafsir Saadi, you can't go wrong. Inshallah. Now, for teaching, mm. you know the methodical. Yeah, it's quite you guys good as love well. that, bro. It's quite good. It's, it's more for the the college college style. Mm. I think it's quite good. The way that it, that was Umar al Ashkar as well. I think he he's was, a he's general the, supervisor. He supervised yeah. the, the, the the team as well. Yeah, exactly the methodolog- methodolog- method. I don't know if I even pronounced that right. Know it's it's that. what it does it in Ajzat, The last few Ajzat, I think it's the method level. something ill. Um, into uh, the, yani it's basically it dissects the Quran. Uh, and it gives you like if someone wants to build their vocab in the Quran. It, yeah. Vocab, word, word, beautiful. For, it's got word, word for word. Firstly, it's got asbab al-nuzul at the start. Yeah. Um, it's got the, 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 the link between the suwar. Yeah. Then it's got the um, word for word. Mm. Then it's got new words, meanings. Yeah. In, like it's and an, then the um, translation of the surah. And then the translation. The yeah. uh, it's got the Arabic in there mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Then it's got the tafsir, and then it's got what we benefit from the ayat, and it's mm-hmm. even got Q ayat in the each yeah. section. It's perfect. It's and it's, it's broken up over forty weeks, I think. It I is, think for, for, for teenagers. For terms, to, yeah. For families who want to introduce for the for teenagers, that's the best introduction to tafsir. Because it, it helps with their Arabic, it helps with their vocab building, it helps with just understanding the tafsir, understanding, and it's usually the short surah that people or the kids already know. Because Juz Amma has the short surahs, and then Tabarak will be after that, and then after that, the next Juz. So the 28, 29, 30 uh, individual hardcover Darul Salam has published that one. They're very good introductions to tafsir. But again, we have to definitely do the methodology of seeking tafsir mm. how is tafsir supposed to be read how do you understand the verses that's a whole separate science you know what we'll do next time as well because i know there's some few word for word ones which just came up yeah, on top of mind Dar salam has done one and uh Maqdis. what is and the other one there's a few other ones as there's well G- uh, J- jimas jimas yes Jim- and then they've got it in three that's a really good that's one. a really good one um definitely we'll, and have then to we'll probably we'll tackle have to some uh some what we, what's available in english for ulum al-quran yeah yeah there's a few books that's what i'm saying like the ulum al-quran has to be a separate one because you got the muqaddimah 
uh, of Usul al-Tafsir, then you have the you have the differences between Al Sheikh and Tayyar, and then you have so many. This is a big bath. It's a very big bath. It's a beautiful bath. I love um, the Muqaddima Usul al-Tafsir. Tayyar is one. I love Tayyar stuff. Yes, he's got a good stuff. Mashallah. Yeah, Hafiz Allah Tabarak wa Taala. It's really good. We can speak all night, but we're running out of time. Um, any final comments? Final words? Uh, suggestions, recommendations before we finish? S- just suggestions. Right now is a time where everyone is struggling in, in Sydney and Melbourne and generally because of the COVID. Take it easy. Be positive. Be optimistic. Right now is a time where يعني, ask about your brothers and sisters. It's a time where everyone's feeling a bit one step back. They're a bit lagging. They're a bit uh, pushing the beat. If, uh, if you can, don't be too hard on yourself, Allah. This is, uh, and if you had goals that you wanted to do during COVID and you haven't got around to doing every single one of them, have small goals. Be consistent in whatever you do. Try from today. Try from tomorrow. Yeah, and every day is a new day, but try your hardest in whatever you do. Right now is is tough for everybody. So be patient with your brothers and sisters. Be patient with your families. Be patient with your parents. Be patient with your spouses. Be patient with your kids. Right now is a time where everyone's feeling a bit, you know, it's a, there's there's a tiredness seeping through now. Fa inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this easy for everyone. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate uh, us all from this uh, disease. And to the brothers and sisters, if anyone is watching, if their family members or if their family friends or anyone they know has been afflicted with COVID, and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and any other disease, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shafi to cure them. Amen. And uh, just يعني, finally, keep us in your dua. Uh, also, keep us, uh, يعني, we try as much as we can uh, and forgive us for our shortcomings. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from us. Jazakumullah khairan. Wabarakallah uh, fikum. Jazakumullah khairan for that yeah. beautiful advice and for being with us tonight. I'd also like to thank all the brothers and sisters who tuned in. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Al Bayan Radio Australia. And also, I forgot to mention our podcast channels Apple Podcasts, Podbean Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. Wherever you find your podcast, you can listen to Al Bayan Radio, wherever you may be. And don't forget to download our app. Barakallah fikum, my dear brothers and sisters. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.